All right. So we're going to watch Simon Dan break down this guy who uh, thinks that he's debunked Apollo 11, which is the most famous moon landing ever. So we're going to try and uh, not not want to have an aneurysm or feel like we're having an aneurysm rather in the middle of this because the flat earth people really make my head feel like it might explode. My comment section was an absolute state. I was getting ripped to pieces by almost everyone claiming that they could not believe that I believe we actually went to the moon. Now, it seems that most of these people have disappeared, but the ones that make the YouTube videos unfortunately haven't. So today, no, no, they have not. One of the most famous moon landing deniers to ever grace your screens. The guy that Buzz Aldrin punched in the face. Nice. Nice. It's this guy. I didn't know that this is the guy that... Uh, this video was with but um i can't say i'm disappointed i definitely can't say that about it because this is sure to be fun hello all and welcome along to another episode of tim for tuesday with me simon dan thank you very much for joining me before we begin today a quick word from me about today's sponsor morgan and morgan did you know that in 2020 there were over 5 million car crashes that's more than 15,000 a day and over six in 2020, 5 million car crashes. Is he talking about worldwide? Because that's literally the pandemic and nobody doing shit. It's 100 an hour. And those in an accident can be entitled to more than you think. For flat earthers, it's probably a face palm injury. But seriously, if you think <laughs> you can start with Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without even leaving the With Morgan & Morgan, there's no need to go down to law A face palm injury. Oh, no. You can submit a claim and have a lawyer review your case with only eight clicks on your phone. Mm. They really are a 21st century law firm, having modernized the injury law process so it's easy to submit a claim. <sighs> you can submit your case details, sign contracts, upload documents and medical records, all from your cell phone. And you can I mean, like you can with most things now. Come on. Duration of your case. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. As I said, you can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without leaving the couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com or called Pound Law, that's Pound 529 from your cell phone. Right, back to today's video, which is on a moon landing denier uh, called a Mr. Bart Sibrel. Now, back in 2002, Bart went up to Buzz Aldrin in the street and asked him to swear on the Bible that the moon landing was real. Now, swearing on the Bible, of course, doesn't mean much, but Buzz Aldrin got so frustrated with Bart and his pretty much offensive behaviour towards him he ended up punching Bart in the face. Now, I do not condone violence whatsoever. It should never <laughs> be the answer. But what makes this Bart such an expert on the moon landing, I wonder? Let's find out, shall we? Now, contrary to Simon Dan, I don't think you should resort to violence, except for as a last resort. Or if somebody is exuding violence upon you or the people around you, then you should probably exude violence back upon them to end it. Because otherwise, this shit ain't going to happen. Like, to say that you shouldn't respond with violence ever is uh, a state of somebody ignoring eventualities that very well may require violence in order to be brought to an end. Some people say it's hard to believe that the moon landings were fake. I say it's hard to believe that they were real. Holy shit. I say it's hard to believe anything coming from a guy who has someone holding his camera that can't sit remotely still. Like, have they not heard of a tripod? What the shit is this dude doing? He's got a webcam. He's got a webcam right here, and he needs somebody to hold this camera and go around him like a fool, like shaky and shit. What is this? Is claiming is that they went 1,000 times farther than they can go today. Is it on his knee? What is he doing? On the very first attempt, it's one million... What? Tower in all of NASA what? Is in a cell phone. I have never... The very first attempt? The fuck does this idiot not know math? Does he not know how to count? Like, you don't have to know math to know that it wasn't the first attempt. 
It was several attempts of failure. It was several attempts of failure. It was several attempts of that failure resulting in explosions. It was several attempts of that meaning death. It was several attempts of not happening. And then they weren't even all called Apollo. Apollo 11 was the 11th Apollo mission. There were multiple fucking missions. Oh my God. The, the audacity and arrogance of this moron. Understood this argument. We went with the technology we had at the time. And that wasn't the first time or the first attempt, by the way. There was, of course, several missions that happened before Apollo 11. Apollo 8 and Apollo 10 both wow. were the moon before returning home. But make no mistake, though, the Apollo computers were state-of-the-art for their time. And, of course, we're now going back to the moon, this time with much more powerful computers. All the proof that you need that the moon landings are fake is in this one picture. In sunlight, shadows will always run <laughs> parallel with one another. This is because the sun is about a million times bigger than the Earth, and it casts shadows in the same direction over an entire continent. So you'll see in sunlight, shadows always run parallel and never intersect. Absolutely true, but the perspective on how we view them sometimes makes a difference. In your first example with the lamppost, you're looking... The audacity of this buffoon is astounding. It's really just dumbfounding at this point that he thinks that he is so intelligent, so good, so smart, so wild, so, so much beyond the rest of us. I will say this, though. It is entirely plausible that the videos are fake because of the fact that they used uh, training footage. And we know for some of this, it was training footage. The thing is, it would make sense to use that footage. From the side. To me, it would make sense to use that footage as the public footage to show people landing on the moon. When having live footage from the moon is going to be a task a lot could go wrong you could maintain comms that's not too difficult to do maintaining comms i like that people like to complain about the president talking to him on a red phone like first of all the red phone was probably talking to nasa who had them on the radio he like he wasn't there in the building. He had to call them from across the country to do this. It makes sense for him to call NASA to talk to the guys they have on a radio. So that makes sense to do. The thing is, how the hell were we going to project live footage from the moon to the earth in a way that was really feasible that we knew was going to be reliable without having any of the issues of video and sound quality and then having problems like it would make sense even if you didn't use all of the footage from the moon that was live as the footage from the moon if you just took some of it used that and spliced in training footage would still make sense to me because of the fact that it was the space race. There was a point to be made with uh, getting there before the USSR and having choppy, fucked up footage because of the radiation in space, all the technology being very relatively new for transmitting video and such from that point and audio and everything. Just minimizing the amount of, oh, well, see, they didn't really do it. And we know because they had a malfunction with the camera, so they didn't have any footage. And since they didn't have footage, they didn't go. And that's all the USSR would have needed, right? So, obviously, you're going to back it up somehow. But we sent plenty of people to the moon. Like, th this happened more than once. The footage is fakeable, obviously. But we've sent plenty of people to the moon. And like you said, Buzz Aldrin punched this guy in the face for the way he was going about it. Like, going to space was too life-altering and perspective-altering for these people to have just been a faked thing in a consensus way across the board. Sometimes makes a difference. In your first example with the lamppost, you're looking from the side at those two shadows, and they appear parallel great but if you stand and take a photo from the middle of these posts look what you get oh, now weird we huh know that the sun's rays come in parallel as you just stated but look at the shadows the shadow on the far left is pointing at a much different angle 
to the shadow on the far right. This is all down to perspective. Much like if yep. you stood in the middle of a train track and take a photo, the train tracks appear to converge at the horizon. Exactly. And people who make these flat earth arguments like to ignore these types of very simple observable facts while also demanding that observable fallacies like misunderstandings of when you're looking at something as grand and vast as the cosmos from your perspective on earth and not having the understanding of how things in space move makes it appear as if everything is circling you but they never answer the questions of why is it the people on the southernmost portions of land mass like southern australia southern south america south africa do not see the north star why is it that in the north we do not see the south star because there is a, a star that's roughly over the south pole the same way there's the star roughly over the north pole polaris right so there is the equivalent on the south why is it that you don't see that from more northern regions that's because their perspective of everything doing this around us in the sky is not accurate. It's just not accurate to think that that's what it is and that the Earth is flat. Or else you would see both of those stars in the sky. You would just see one of them for six months out of the year and the other one for six months out of the year. And that's not how it works. Here's a picture the federal government claims was taken on the moon. The astronaut's shadow runs at 12 o'clock. And this rock, only about five feet away, the shadow runs at 9 o'clock. This is a 90 degree difference from objects five feet apart from one another. Now, first off, I think you've been very generous or creative with those angles there. Let's have a proper look, shall we? The shadow from the rock looks to be more at this angle. And the astronaut is perhaps it's true on this angle. And as I mentioned earlier, this is purely down to perspective and where you are viewing this from. In fact, others have pointed this out too. Here's another example as to how it works on Earth's surface compared to the moon. This proves that this was taken on Earth. Hold on, we're going to take this back here because it's important to realize that these two do look like they would converge in their shadow. This over here looks like it would run roughly this direction and converge up here with both of these. This shadow from this tree it looks like it's running up this way. So it, look at this one that way, right? So it's very important to note this way, this way, this way. That all lines up, right, with this one's roughly more straight. And then this, they move further toward your perspective, the further off to your right that they get. From the, if the sun's behind you, the further off to your right, they seem to come toward you. So that would make all of this make more sense. Works on Earth's surface compared to the moon. This proves that this was taken on Earth with an electrical light inside of a television studio. This is all the proof that you. What? Need. Or, or. You could even make an argument if that's what you want to say. Oh, you got this and this. You're in this uh, this environment. You could just say there's also a fucking light on the lander. So you have the light from the lander and you have the light from the sun and you probably have a flash on the camera. Who would have thunk? That the moon landings were fake. Well, it's not really. It's actually pretty poor proof. And in terms of proving that the moon it's landing was actually fake, some of the worst proof I've, I've ever seen. Much more convincing stuff. If Toyota said that they made a car 50 years ago that could go 50,000 miles on the gallon of gasoline, and yet today their best car could only go 50 miles a gallon or 1,000th the distance, wouldn't the fraud of the previous claim be obvious? Well, not necessarily. Because what if they made that car and it was powered by steam, like the Flintstones car? Then, in theory, it could go 50,000 miles. But your argument again, True. is a poor True. one. As we all know, NASA's budget has reduced dramatically since the 60s, since the days of the Apollo missions. Only now have NASA been given comparatively enough money for to go back, which is what we're doing. Okay, so to be, to be more specific, the reason you have people like Elon Musk with SpaceX that are getting a lot of attention with their space work and NASA's kind of on the sideline is because of these defunding programs with NASA. So NASA has had 
severe cuts in funding. Meanwhile, NASA, or not NASA, but SpaceX, and um, who is it? Project Blue, I think. Um, and then, and then the other one, right? Because there's there's SpaceX with Elon Musk. There's I think it's Project Blue is the third guy whose name I don't know. And then there's Jeff Bezos' company because there were three private space companies. The 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 one who I don't know the name of predates SpaceX and Elon Musk. So all of these companies also have government contracts. So they actually get paid government funds and have top secret clearance for certain types of things like satellites to launch on their their rockets that are going into space satellites for the government instead of using NASA because it saves the government some money to just give these guys a little bit of money and let them do their own thing within capitalist free market and because of the fact that they're doing this on their own they want to go to the moon which we stopped doing because we didn't see the a benefit to the cost of doing it granted if you look at the cost of doing it in the 60s and 70s and you compare that to today with inflation it's cheaper now it's cheaper now to send things into space it's cheaper now to actually get to the moon it's safer now to send people to space and to the moon because of all these different tests we've done because of the international space station because of advancements in technology and ceramics because of advancements in physics and our understanding of fuel and conservation of fuel, how to optimize our fuel, things of these nature. So getting there has actually gotten cheaper and safer, more reliable. The thing is, they still believe that going to the moon and building a base on the moon is going to be the best way to get to Mars, if you listen to Elon Musk talk about this, which is why he wants to go to the moon. He wants to go to the moon to build a base on the moon to go to Mars, which was the original NASA plan to get to Mars. There are author, author Jesus, there are opposing ideas that came from NASA at the same time that just didn't get any discussion, and I assume they didn't get any discussion because uh, it would have required NASA to need less funding. And because they would need less funding, people would get paid less money. So it didn't make its way through the news. But there was every roughly six months in our orbit, we could launch a rocket for Mars. And it'll take six months to travel to go from Earth to Mars at the point in our orbits where Earth and Mars are closest to each other, where they're, they're, Mars would intercept this rocket, basically. And then... That rocket could have equipment to house things, start setting up robotically, some shelters and planting things like, like moss so that it starts generating oxygen outside of what it's already got as a supply. And then so forth and so on. You do this a couple times and then you can send people, right? That was the opposing plan. This is still a very valid option that's available to us. But we, we tend to not discuss it because of the fact that now SpaceX is able to send a rocket into space and then have it land and use it again. We were not able to do that before. It was your rocket went to space and then it came back and it was done. That was the end. Now it's able to land and go again, right? So if we're able to land and go again, you could actually just have a rocket that's doing this, taking people to the moon, and then a rocket that's going from the moon because it'll take less fuel to go from the moon to then go to Mars because now it's not just a one-use system, right? So that's kind of the train of thought and why Elon Musk, to my understanding, has made that argument, but I digress. Point is, that makes much more sense to me than this guy's ridiculous theory of nonsense. And yet, this is exactly the moon landing frog. And yet people don't see it because of their emotional attachment to it. They're claiming they went a thousand times farther what? 50 years ago than they can go today. What? 50 year older technology. That's that nonsense. We can't go that far again. That's actually nonsense. We likely don't have the budget. It is incredible. Exactly. Exactly. Moon, that doesn't make any sense. See, we're spending too much money to help Ukraine to send anybody to the moon. Um... California actually wants to quadruple global debt for slavery reparations as a state that doesn't have, like, did not have slaves in American history. And um, they want to do this to 
to compensate all black people in their state, regardless of their relation to American slave trade as a state that didn't have any slaves in American history. And um, once again, this would total out to like three or four times the global debt, not American debt, global debt. So things like that are, are a bigger precedent and need for our politicians to discuss and fight over rather than I don't sending anybody to the moon. That's why we don't go to the moon, okay? It's not I guess it is rocket science, but it's not it's not challenging to grasp or understand if you just take a simple look at what's el what else has been going on and uh, the discussions about money. Also, if you look at things like, oh, well, we haven't been able to get anywhere closer, but we've gone a thousand times further than we can go now. Like that's actually absurd. We've had satellites that we launched after we went to the moon that have left our our solar system at this point I mean, do you understand this come on now guy it's the only time in history that a technological achievement like the automobile or the airplane or nuclear power that no nation on earth could repeat it 50 years later that's when not true fact, it should be a hundred times greater 50 years later if they could go to the moon with 1960s technology Men would be in another solar system by now. No, we wouldn't. Absolutely ridiculous what? to make. The absolute nearest solar system to us, the nearest, would be Proxima Centauri. And that's around 4.2 light years away. Do you know how long it would take to get there? Even if we could travel a thousand times faster than they did for the Apollo moon missions to get to the moon. 14,000 years. Men would have walked... He's basically making an argument. That if we went to the moon in the 60s, we could teleport to a new solar system today. That's basically what he's saying. That's fucking absurd. That, like, that's legitimate absurdity. Holy fuck. This is why these people make my brain want to explode. This is crazy. I think we should. I think you should be able to just vote for the moon. It seems like a good plan. It's on Mars 10 years later, 40 years ago, which never happened. Like, I mean, the issue here is that... Granted, I say this because I think that we should be able to vote. First of all, all our, par our politicians would have to actually discuss what the hell they're doing with things in an honest way. But I think we should be voting on what our politicians are going to do with our money more than the politician that just gets in front of a microphone, says thank you for the first half of their time, and then for the next half of their time talks about how much they care about people that they've never helped once in their entire career of politics. Bart is blissfully unaware of just how hard space travel is. And there would be bases on the moon there today, of which there are none. It's the only time in the history... I already of the talked world about this. The bases on the moon would cost billions of dollars in the 60s, and it's why we didn't do it. Deliberately destroy and now it would cost hundreds of trillions for us to do. We're still not going to do it. Elon Musk might do it. That, that's about it. This guy knows nothing of the government. Nothing. Oh, my God. So NASA throwing these things in the trash makes perfect sense because that is what you would do. Like, these things were obsolete. They were made obsolete by newer technology, so then they shred the old classified information, and it goes in the trash. That's what you do with it. That's how you, that's how you get rid of it. It's what's done all the way across all of government operations in that, in that sense. He just knows literally nothing. He is Jon Snow on the subject of government action and behavior. But he's also Jon Snow in light of, I don't know, common sense and maybe... Um, science, logical understanding, or application of rationality. It's just absurd at this point that people think that they're this fucking wise with their flat earth nonsense. I do not want to watch this entire fucking thing. NASA claims that they did. Now they're talking about the launch I just don't care about movie ads. Rocket, which is incredibly difficult and expensive to make. Only 15 were yep. built and pretty much all of them were used. To make them all again would be incredibly hard to do so on such a limited budget. They only did that to destroy the evidence of the fraud, which is proof itself that they didn't go. Because if they really went, they would never destroy the technology. Oh, it's I not true at all. I think they could have fished out all the stages of the Saturn V rockets and then sellotaped them together. The B-52 bomber. <laughs> 
was made 70 years ago and is still in service today in the United States Air Force because it works so well. Okay. Wait, wait, which one? B-52 bomber. No, it's not. Oh, my God. No, it's not. We retired the B-52 a long time ago. A long time ago. A real long time ago. You know why? Because the B-2 bomber came out, and the B-2 bomber is stealth. It carries a bigger payload, and it's just all around better to have in your arsenal. So why would we keep using the B-52 that is a fuel nightmare, a logistical catastrophe, and uh, it can be seen as very slow and an easy target to hit? was made 70 years ago and is still in service today in the United States Air Force because it works so well. This dude's full okay. of nonsense. But that proves nothing. The B-52 bomber doesn't break up after every flight, does it? Now they want to return to the moon and they're having to recreate all that equipment from scratch because they deliberately destroyed it in order to hide the evidence of the fraud. Now, it's the only technology we had. It was destroyed when we used it. landings are real. Than to believe that they were. What is, this dude's so fucking dumb. Proves that you don't have a clue about anything. Now, Bart also <laughs> talked about the Van Allen belts in one video. Let's see if he has any idea about them. Oh, well, what can I do? I have to talk about what everyone wants me to talk about, and I guess it's become my more. I'm going to look something up on the other monitor to pull up right after there. this. A lot of people don't realize, just like about 9 11, they don't realize there was a building 7, a third building that collapsed in some footprint. <laughs> so many people don't know that. M many people don't know that the Earth is surrounded by deadly radiation called the Van Allen radiation belt. Many people don't know that, no. But from what you're about to say in regards to using the Van Allen belts as proof we didn't go tells me you don't know much about them either. It's deadly because the sun, let's say, the <laughs> here, it sends out cosmic rays. The Earth's magnetic field traps them around here and it itself becomes a barrier of protection for future cosmic rays. Yes, indeed. The Van Allen belts are caused by Earth's magnetic field and how that interacts with the charged particles emitted by the sun. The fact he is continuing tells me he doesn't know enough about them. So when the space shuttle orbits the Earth, it's right about here, which is only about 200 miles above the Earth. So just pick a spot geographically from you that's about 200 miles away, 250 miles away, I think, actually, and put that vertical, and that's as far as the space station is. In fact, every manned mission, Gemini, Mercury, Skylab, the space shuttle, Soyuz, uh, you know, have all been in Earth orbit around here, except going to the moon. Let's say the moon is this little dot over here. They except going to the moon and the things that we've sent outside of the solar system as a whole, the things that we've sent all the way to Jupiter, we've crash landed things into Jupiter just to kind of test the gravity and the, the density of the atmosphere. We've like... We've crashed things into into Venus. That's how we know the atmosphere make the atmospheric makeup of Venus and how it dissolves through acid. Our our probes, basically, like, come on now. They would have to go through this in order to reach the moon. And it's my so I guess they don't have this, this video anymore. By the way, Kate from a funny thing happened on the way to the moon proves they were in Earth orbit the entire time. So Bart thinks space travel itself is real, just we didn't go as far as the moon. Now let's put this one to bed once and for all. He's a special let's cookie. Let's have a look at the flight path for Apollo 11 in regards to leaving... Oh, I don't uh, think I moved orbit. this, did now, I? the Van Allen belts are strongest nope. over the oh, equator well. and almost absent at the poles. As you can see here, the Apollo 11 craft on both leaving and returning to Earth travel through the weakest parts of the belt. And... They even calculated it's kind of like they calculated that, huh? How much radiation the astronauts would be exposed to. Turns out it wasn't a massive amount. Hey, Zeus. And even if it was going to be a larger amount, something that you could easily do is you could apply a thin layer of lead to one of the uh, layers of the entire shuttle space that they're actually in, that little pod, and... Uh, pancake it in there between other stuff so they're not exposed to the lead and the lead will help reduce your exposure to said radiation like it's not that crazy about 1.8 milligrays 
for the entire trip. A safe amount to be expected. Also, they all died of cancer, away. right? So and NASA designed the flight path for minimal exposure, something you would have known if you really had looked into the banana belts properly. But as usual, with these sorts of things, you listen to something someone else has said and you run with it. If, they, if you actually looked into science. Idea. This guy doesn't look into science. A mess from Bart there. Bit of an embarrassment, really. I'm definitely going to look at him again. He is responsible for the famous documentary of funny things happening. Oh, you know what? Maybe. Room. Now, I can break that down, but a lot of people already have. Maybe it's on Rumble. If you'd like to see it, let me know in the comments. It's not on YouTube anymore. And who knows? I might even invite this bar onto the channel, which could be interesting. Thank you so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button too. Um, your subscription. If they do have it. Uh, we're on our way to half a million. All right. Uh, hopefully we'll get there pretty soon. Just our time to once again thank Morgan and Morgan for sponsoring today. Here's me to give you a little update on that. Remember, visit forthepeople.com or phone pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great week. And I'll see you on Friday for the return of the gate guy. See you then. The gate guy. Jesus. So, that was our video for today from Simon Dan. And I tried to find this video clip on YouTube, but they got rid of it. But here's, I believe, the video footage from when Buzz Aldrin punched this idiot in the face. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black. Have ever thought of saying I misrepresented get it myself? Away from me! You're a coward and a liar and a thief. And that's pretty much how Buzz Aldrin felt about this dude and his nonsense, and his denial of science, and his denial of going to the moon. And a thief. And a thief. And a thief. His old man Buzz Aldrin gave this dude a mighty fist sandwich. So. Take it for what it's worth. The internet did when that happened. Uh, the fact is, I personally do not think that you're going to be in the position of someone like Buzz Aldrin as that kind of a figure and then uh, risk pretty much your, your freedom, right, for assaulting a guy because he's full of nonsense. I just think that it's... Uh, a little less likely of a thing.